hope you're all well and welcome back to my channel for a new video and as you can see by the title um, this video is all about our little man Hugo who's just here having a cuddle now I've just sat down he's like yes I can sit on your lap while you film this video so today's video is very different to what I normally post but I really wanted to film and vlog this experience of Hugo and his BOAS surgery so BOAS surgery is a procedure that's performed on French Bulldogs English Bulldogs Pugs or the breeds that have the short snout so these breeds are bred to have this very short snout and obviously with the popularity of pugs french bulldogs um the demand for breeders and puppies has gone through the roof which has led to a lot of breeding issues um which is with the boas surgery what happens with french bulldogs which is very very common now a lot of bulldogs need this procedure um but it's basically from all the breeding it's called some sort of syndrome i can't pronounce the word because it's really long it begins with a b um and i know i'll say it wrong but yeah it's a syndrome that is very common in french bulldogs which means that they suffer from synotic nares and their elongated palate so the synotic nares means that their nose holes are really, really narrow. So with their nose holes being really narrow, it limits the air and oxygen that they can get into their bodies. Then the elongated palate is the excess skin that's at the back of the throat. So with this excess skin, what happens is, well, the way that the vet described it to me was, imagine that you have, obviously with French Bulldogs, their necks are very, very muscly. Um, Hugo hasn't got a really big muscly neck yet because he's only one years old. Um, but a lot of French Bulldogs, they do have a lot of muscle. So you imagine having your hands round your throat and then trying to breathe in uh, but then put your tongue to the back of your mouth to the roof of your mouth so obviously with the elongated palate it's like the sucking so with this palate what happens is what the vet explained to me was that when the french bulldog breathes in this excess skin can flap around and then trap the airway um, and obviously this excess skin can cause problems in a further lung then this elongated palate can get aggravated if the french bulldog has allergies if the french bulldog goes on long walks so a lot of french bulldogs as well and um, they do tire easily and they don't do very well in heat so obviously i want to share this video um to raise awareness of boas surgery because hugo has had it done um he is one years old just turned one and i was very very nervous about getting this surgery done like i wanted to document it and document his recovery more so because when when basically the whole journey started was when hugo got a really bad sickness bug and i took him to the vets and when we first had him from a puppy, he had a very good nose. Um, when we took him to the vet, the vet explained to me like, oh, he's got a brilliant nose. And he showed me a picture, which I'll put on the right hand side. So this is the image that the vet showed me. And basically you can see four French Bulldog snouts here. And, and the first one you can see, it's got a very nice open nose. Um, the vet said to me that this open nose is very uncommon a lot of french bulldogs sit between the mild stenosis and the moderate stenosis syndrome so that is very very common it's very rare that he came across a french bulldog that had the picture of the first nose so when we had hugo and he checked him out and compared his nose to this image he had mild stenosis which again is the way they grade the noses so this is how the vets sort of know um when to advise boas surgery and obviously the advise the procedure done on the nares um so yeah as he was a puppy he was fine um no issues with his breathing and um, he was then slowly getting a little bit more snorty and then one thing that we noticed which is a really um key sign of elongated palate was that he would throw up foam and like sicken his food for example if he went had his dinner went running around like absolute crazy which he does like french bulldogs are very like crazy breeds and funny characters as you know if you have one yourself and he would then all of a sudden just throw up food and foam he would then do this sometimes on a walk saying if he was on his harness and i pulled his harness a little bit um it would happen randomly like sometimes he'd be asleep on the sofa fast asleep with his head hanging off the sofa next minute he'd jump off and then we'd just be sick on the floor like the amount of stains I had on my carpet from his sick was crazy. Um, and obviously a lot of the time it was foam, but when he had a sickness bug or whatnot, or he then threw up a bit more, it was then, it was then like stomach acid and then that was harder stains to get out. For a French Bulldog to keep sicking up like saliva and foam, this is a key symptom that they may have a elongated palate. And this is another thing that the vet told me. So when I took him in um, on his appointment, he said to me, right, okay, unfortunately Hugo's nose has gone from the next grade across. So it's gone from a mild stenosis to a more moderate stenosis so as you can see his nose was more closed but that was obviously where he grew he filled out his face 
and then I mentioned that sometimes he would throw up foam he would also do this really weird like backward snort like you know when someone gets like phlegm they do that awful noise like sucking noise he would do that and sometimes he would do that if he was asleep um, and say if he was lying on his back in different positions if he got too warm he would do it and me and Russ used to really panic when he did this like sometimes in the night he would be he has a bed on the floor and he'd be literally like on his back snoring his head off the noise of the snoring was ridiculous so when he used to sleep downstairs we used to hear him snoring like really really loud and then obviously he has his bed upstairs now with us and yeah the snoring was ridiculous we me and Russ did get used to it um, but at first it was really hard like we could not sleep it was that loud and, and I told this to the vet as well and then he was like yeah that is because of his palate it's vibrating in his throat causing this really really no noise so when he was sleeping he would get in all sorts of positions and then this noise would then start sometimes and what the noise was was that basically because he was like either lying on his back or he was too warm it was the palate blocking his airway so him trying to suck the air uh, which is really alarming um, was for him to then try and like move that palate out of the way so he could then breathe properly and looking back at this now and saying this I am so glad that we got this procedure done a lot of French Bulldogs breeders will say that French Bulldogs are meant to be like really snorty that's the breed and it really isn't normal it's not healthy for the dog and obviously it's the demand in the breeding that has caused this syndrome that's common in a lot of French Bulldogs um, even if it's not from the start of life it can be in the middle sometimes it all just depends um, and obviously we got Hugo from a really good breeder um, who had we saw his parents and he was really good like he's parents were healthy so again it, this can happen like anything like either if you do your research if you don't do your research this is why I really wanted to film this video because obviously boa surgery at first um as soon as the vet said to me right okay we advise for Hugo to have boa surgery I was like oh my god like I was absolutely petrified I was petrified of the anesthetic um the procedure I thought oh god it's such a big operation like at the time he was only 10 months old um is am I doing it too young um there's all these things going through my head and then I come straight to YouTube and was trying to find information about this video but couldn't really find for me it was more the recovery process like I was really really worried on how he was going to recover and if he was going to be knocked around too much that was the really scary thing for me and looking on YouTube I couldn't find any videos really that sort of talked about the recovery process and yeah that's why I wanted to film this video where I've sort of done a little diary of Hugo um, when he's had his up and his recovery and which is amazing by the way like the recovery for this is so so quick um I, I me and Russ were just so shocked at how quick that Hugo recovered from this procedure um I know obviously he's a young French bulldog but the vets did say to me that the recovery time is really quick it's 48 hours and um, you can take him home the same day so we dropped him off at the vet at 7 30 in the morning the night before he couldn't have any food or drink after midnight and yeah we dropped him off which was awful like, I was literally in tears I just felt awful um, and we also got Hugo castrated at the same time um, just so it's one lot of anesthetic and I also had his bloods tested and um, by the vets to see if there's any underlying health issues or anything else that you can't pick up from a physical examination it's also good to have bloods on record with your vet as well let's say if your dog had an accident or they need to have a look at blood um, a transfusion or anything they know their blood type and they can just do it straight away so that's another reason why I had the blood test done so prior to him going to the vets as well he had to take a pre-med a week before which I'll link the name below for you um, just so we had to have this med every morning with his food before the procedure was done so after we dropped him off me and Ross literally was decorating we decorated the hallway and the office just to keep ourselves busy um, because the vet said to us to not ring till after two o'clock so obviously from 7 30 in the morning to not hear anything till two um was really really scary and I was really really worried but obviously if anything happened and they needed to contact us they would have contacted us like straight away before two o'clock so when I rang at literally two o'clock bang on the dot um I spoke to the nurse and they were like right okay Hugo is doing really really well um, he's just eating some food and um, he's coming round now he's all okay um, are you okay to pick up about 6 30 just so he can have his medication and painkillers and then he's ready to go um, so obviously then we're like right okay we're going to pick him up at 6 30 um, so I was so glad that it all went okay his castration went fine um, but yeah to hear that he was eating straight away was really good because I was concerned of one of my concerns was of this procedure was him eating so I was like obviously with him having his nose done and his throat obviously removing the excess skin he would have had stitches in the back of his throat 
Um, so I was, oh, how's he going to eat? Is he going to have to have like liquid food? How am I going to feed him? So obviously I'll talk you all through this now as well, um, how we looked after him and whatnot through the recovery process. So with his food, they said to us that he could pretty much eat kibble like straight away. Um, I sort of kept him on wet food and I kept on wet food, I think for about two weeks. And I didn't give him any like dentist sticks or any hard food. Um, I was giving him some scrambled egg and just some chicken. I didn't want to give him any hard food just in case. I know he likes his chewy bones and he really gets them to the back of his mouth. So I was just really worried. I'm just an overprotective um, French bulldog mom. And as well, when we picked him up, like one thing that we really noticed was that when he yawned, he couldn't yawn fully. Like he'd try and open his mouth and he would do a little cry. Obviously the back of his throat was really sore. Um, obviously you'll see on the videos I'll show you um, in a bit um, of his like, poor little face um, and obviously as well I've got some befores and afters of this procedure as well. Also if any of you are watching this that have a French Bulldog and they have the same sort of symptoms I'll just explain what Hugo had uh, or any questions or dates please leave a comment below for you. I really want to help people out um, with this video and share my knowledge from this that I got from the vet um, and also if you've got any worries or concerns as well with the recovery process. Yeah I really wanted just to make this video to help any of the French Bulldog owners out who have had BOAS surgery or considering BOAS surgery and just to share a bit more light on it as well. By having BOAS surgery recommended to us by our vet, like me and Russ really looked into it. We really wanted to make sure it was the right decision for Hugo and it really was. Like we know that this is going to help his quality of life, it's going to help his breathing. His breathing wasn't really, really bad. Like he wasn't like passing out on walks. It wasn't that severe. And um, that's why I want to sort of raise awareness of this as well. Um, Hugo wasn't a severe case of BOAS and um, his issue was more his palate than his nose um, but obviously severe cases of BOAS surgery is like French Bulldogs they can't even walk that far they're like passing it in the heat they don't cope well with heat anyway and um, like Hugo is not very good in the heat but obviously having this surgery done he has been a lot better like before he had the surgery done it was before Easter we took him in for the procedure on the 23rd of April and prior to that there was a really hot week um, over Easter and he really struggled um, he was just getting really warm and hot and bothered I had him on his cool mat with his fan and we didn't walk him or let him outside and we just knew then right okay this is Easter we're not even in full summer we're not even had any crazy heat waves what is he going to be like and we need to get this done now and even like with his allergies at summer as well um, his allergies that he gets um, that we've just started to notice that he gets he's allergic to pollen um, that as well will also irritate their throat and their palate which will also affect their breathing so we know doing this procedure was going to help that it was going to then help him get more air in and obviously it's made him he can get a lot more air in like after the procedure the first time we let him outside he literally sat there and just like sniffed the air and it was obviously like oh my god like I can get more air in and we just knew um, even like the, the couple of days after he wasn't as loud snorting he wasn't snoring like you can hear now he's asleep on my lap and he is silent like I think some other videos that I shared literally you can hear Hugo snoring in the background um, but yeah he's literally fast asleep on my lap now he's not making a noise at all which is an absolute dream obviously it's more comfortable for him as well because we noticed that after this procedure he slept so much better like in the night he would get really irritable um, obviously him being on the bed on the floor or he'd jump on the end of the bed sometimes we could he was always moving around and we know now he was like moving around to try and position himself so he could breathe better and me saying that now is just so alarming and just so like oh my god like I'm so, I'm so glad that we had this procedure done and I'm so grateful um for the vets that we had this done with we were also really really lucky to live near a vet which is recommended like from all over the country like it's based in the Midlands and I know a lot of people travel um, from all different areas to this vet a lot of farmers use this vet and um, it's a family known business the vets were also really really good at doing a pre-cost for us so we could then start to sort out the pet insurance because our pet insurance had BOAS surgery covered and um, which was amazing as well because we were really worried that um, I know some pet insurances don't cover BOAS surgery but ours did um, I'll link our pet insurance below for you in the description um, but yeah we pay about £45 a month for Hugo's pet insurance and that's for long Cover. So obviously it's a bit more pricier. With a French Bulldog you do have to have a decent pet insurance. I couldn't recommend having a decent pet insurance enough. Obviously if we'd had the procedure done and had no pet insurance we'd have had to pay for it ourselves. And overall this procedure cost £1,100. We obviously had him castrated as well which I paid for separately because that wasn't covered on the pet insurance. But if you are looking at getting this procedure done then I definitely recommend getting a few different quotes because I know some quotes can really really vary. Like we watched videos on the internet and some people were saying that some vets are charged for like £2,000, 
£4,000, like it was like extortionate. Our vet, it's a, it's a family known run business and the aftercare um, is amazing. You can, you just know, like I just know that um, this, the vets were absolutely amazing. And that week as well, when Hugo had his BOAS surgery done, um, the vet who was doing the procedure on Hugo had done like four or five Frenchies that week as well. Like the vet said to us, like it's a super common procedure. They do it all the time. And um, they also showed us pictures of procedures that they'd done in the past as well, which is also really, really good. So really look for that if you're looking at having BOAS surgery for your French Bulldog, like ask loads of questions. And um, also a procedure that was done on the nose. Um, our vet, cut Hugo's nose with a scalpel. I know a lot of places will say that um, they sometimes they use a laser or whatnot, but a laser can be longer recovery and having a scalpel is a more cleaner cut. Um, and what they do is they basically cut like two little triangles. So if I put a picture on the right hand side of Hugo's nose um, before, you can see that it's very, very close. And then what they did was they took like a little triangle cut from literally this side to this side and just did a cut and then stitched it all up and then the stitches dissolved I think they dissolved about I think it was about eight weeks so over the recovery process of this vlog um, of my diary you can sort of see the steps I think overall now his stitches are all out now so it's been just over two months since his operation um, same with these castration stitches as well they come out really really quickly so yeah I think that is everything so what I'll do now I'll show you my little diary that I recorded um, of Hugo having his BOAS surgery and the recovery process as well as his before pictures and after pictures so yeah again if you've got any questions or dates then please feel free to leave a comment and I really want to help you guys out and obviously if you like this video don't give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel as there will be another video coming soon about Hugo which will be owning a French Bulldog as we've had Hugo for a year now so I really wanted to film a video on tips and tricks and what you need to know about owning a French Bulldog so yeah I really hope that this video diary helps you guys out as I said I'm really really glad that we got this procedure done for Hugo it's made such a difference to him he was crazy at the start anyway but he has so much more energy um, he's basically just a different dog and yeah I'm so grateful for the vets that did the procedure um, and look for looking after Hugo and all the nurses yeah. and yeah I'm so glad that this has really helped Hugo out and I really want to uh, raise awareness and hope that this video helps you guys out too. So Hugo's eating his food really, really well. I don't think he's eaten since yesterday afternoon. Um, so I'll give him one of his tablets. He's got some meds as well to take, which I'm going to give him. I've also got um, this to get on his head. Um, we didn't put it on him last night because he was so, so out of it. Like we picked him up at half six and he was literally out of it till now. Like he was waking up in the night, but he wasn't even moving. So they just told me to give him food little and often. But yeah, I'm really happy that he's eating that. I'm actually sure he's had a good drink as well. So... He seems okay. Look, even the difference in his nose already and his breathing just sounds so much better. Um, you can tell the way he's sniffing the air. Um, but yeah, bless him. You can see that his nose looks so much more open. You can see his little stitches. Um, it's quite, it's quite shiny, you can't see. So we've literally given him some of his meds and he's got some more food there and we've just cooked him a little egg. But because it's gonna be really warm today, we've got to keep him inside and just keep him nice and cool. But yeah, you can see like his nose looks so much better, a lot more open. And we've even noticed a difference in him breathing as well. Like he's not as that vibrating breathing like he gets from his throat. And he's also got his little shave bits on his legs from where he's had his IV and stuff. And he's also got his stitches as well. So after his food, we're gonna put his cone on him so he doesn't mess with his stitches. So good morning, it's the second night of us being downstairs and Hugo's really, really perky this morning, aren't you? He won't be put half seven because he was hungry, he's been really, really hungry. And then I kind of give him his wet food. But look at him, how well, oh sorry, you can't really see his face, it looks dark, let's go this way. Mm. 
You are such a good boy. You can see his little stitches on his nose. It's because it's hard to see his nose is black. But he's honestly, he's recovering. Hello. Hello. But obviously you can hear, he's not as snuffly as he normally is. Like normally now you'd hear him sniffing all there. We've noticed such a difference in his breathing, like a massive difference. Um, like he, he still like snuffles when he like really sniffs, but it's because obviously all underneath is all sore and inflamed but it hurts him when he yawns bless him like when he yawns because of his palate back of his mouth he does like a little cry and um, but he's been really good like he's actually he hasn't needed to have any um paracetamol the vets, the vets didn't have any they said to try him with calpol um but he hasn't he's been absolutely fine like he's literally just having his, his meds that he's got his metacam and his um can't say it begins with an o tablets that he has to have before the operation but literally he's i'm so proud of him he's such a little trooper but you can just see the stitches there on the top of his nose um but yeah literally so so proud of him we also tried him with the bumper collar and oh my god it distressed him out so so much like he literally was fighting to get it off and we were petrified that then we got it on and we were scared he was going to rip it off and touch his nose and catch it on his nose so we just took it off and we've just been watching him like a hawk because we've also had him castrated as well and um, so it's one lot as anaesthetic i know the vet's advised to have the bumper collars on um, but she said if it is distressing him then just really watch him um, but at the moment he hasn't bothered licking or touching because he obviously his nose has been done and his palate is sore his throat is sore as well um, so yeah we literally just watched him like a hawk and it was really warm yesterday um, so we kept him inside all day, which is quite hard because he loves to lie in the sun um, he absolutely loves it he's such a sun boy so trying to keep him cool and not lie in the sun and then he was trying to lie in the garden um, he was really perky yesterday and even today hello 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 he looks really bright but he's literally like you can see the little stitches on the top of his nose just there they're like slightly purple and blue and you can just see how much better his nose is widened like i can't he's not making a noise at all um before you could really see him breathing um like you could you can actually see him like sucking in and he's not doing that anymore and it makes you realize like how like we he wasn't that bad like obviously he was really snuffly he was but he wasn't out of breath all the time and they're having this done it was like no there was a problem um and I'm just so grateful that he's young. He's only 10 months old, so he can recover from this really well. And again, it's going to have a better quality of life for him. So, yeah, he's seen the vets on Tuesday. He's going back for a checkup with the vet who did the operation. Um, so, yeah, we'll let you know how he gets on there as well. So I'm just going to keep documenting each day. So it's like today is the second day after his operation. And, yeah, I'm so, so proud of him. So today is Tuesday and we've literally been to the vet this morning. Hugo did really, really well. The vet was super, super happy with him. Um, he was really pleased like, with his nose and his stitches. He gets like, so excited when he's with people and the vet's just loving him because he's so friendly. So he's just down here having some food now because um, it's his lunch time. So he's just having a little bit of food. He's having all his meds okay. He has lost a little bit of weight, but it's just obviously we've kept him on the wet food. He normally has like wet food with a bit of dry food. So I'm going to start giving him some dry food now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet it like puppy food. Because um, they just said to keep him on a bit of wet food for the first week. Um, just so nothing hard to because his throat's going to be sore but the vet said that for his palate they took like one and a half centimeters off so obviously his palate was the bigger issue um so he's going back now two weeks a day for his final checkup because they want to see him again um so yeah every day he's literally getting more and more he's practically himself there anyway but yeah we're just gonna like, feed him some more food now so he puts a bit of weight back on So here's a little look at Hugo. It's been a week since his operation, just over a week. And I thought I want to do a little video just to show his nose. It's healing really nice. It was really pinky on the inside. And because his nose is like black, we were wondering like, oh, is it getting sore? Is it getting infected? But it looks okay now. We've just been keeping an eye on it because obviously he can lick it with his tongue. Um, obviously got a bit of dog hair stuck in it there. But the stitches are fine. You can just see... Um, oh, he's just burped in front of the camera. Thank you, Hugo. Um, but yeah, the one, the right nostril is just a little bit more pinker than the other one. But we've just been keeping our eye on it. But it's healing really nicely. And it's definitely back to his normal cheeky self. So it's been a couple of weeks now and I thought I'd just give you a little Hugo update. So he had an appointment at the vet's 
last Tuesday and they went to go and see him for his final checkup to see how he was doing, um, how his stitches were healing and everything but they were super, super happy with him and his progress. They asked me how he was and I was like, he's literally got so much more energy, he's so much more full of life, he's literally running around like his normal crazy self even more so. Um, so yeah, they were super happy with him, so they don't need to see him now. Um, so we managed to cover everything with the pet insurance, which I'll link everything below for you, um, and what we did. But yeah, they were super happy with him, and his nose is literally, you can see a couple of stitches are starting to come out a little bit, but his nose has healed so well. For the first week or so, his nose is quite pinky, and I'll put a picture on the right hand side, I wasn't sure if it was sore, or if it was getting infected. Obviously he can reach and lick it, so I was like, oh, I hope he hasn't getting infected or whatnot. But it was fine, it's just the way his nose was healing, and it was totally normal. Um, so yeah, his nose has healed super fast like with a dog's nose as well it does heal um, really quickly but a, a lot of the times he's like digging in the garden so I was worried about him getting it dirty and he was like getting dirt up his nose so it was hard to keep clean so his stitches are healing really well and a couple of them are starting to fall out now so I'll go and show you his stitches so here is the little monkey show us your nose Hugo as you can see his airways nose is a lot wider um, you can slowly see his stitches are slowly starting to come out trying to keep him to keep still and look at me Hugo What's this? Can you see better there? There you go. So you can see on the right nostril, he's, he's one stitch has come out. Um, but literally, his breathing has been so much better. Um, he's literally been sleeping really well through the night time. Like, it, it's mad how much you realise that um, it was affecting him. And he wasn't really severe either. Um, so he's got a lot more energy. He's obviously a lot more crazy than normal. And we had him castrated as well, which is hopefully calming down. But it didn't, unfortunately. He's still crazy. Um... Sorry about that, I was just shutting the door too. Um, but yeah, you can see, here you go, look at me. Good boy, good boy. Look at that little nose. Look how good your nose looks now. So yeah, his airways are a lot more open. And yeah, he's just uh, got so much more energy. I can't describe how much um, energy he has. Like he runs around like crazy, he's sleeping better. So yeah, we are super happy with him. And yeah, it's been nearly a month now. So it'll be a month um, this weekend since he had his surgery. So yeah, really happy with how he's doing. He really literally recovered really well, really quickly. We couldn't believe how quickly he recovered. Um, within a few days, he was back to his normal self, running around like crazy, but he's just got so much more energy. I can't like describe the difference in him, but yeah, super happy with him. So Hugo is posing here for me. Here is his nose. Hugo, look at me. Good boy, and if you can see, it's just focusing. Hugo, Hugo, look. I'm trying to get it to focus. It keeps moving. Um, but as you can see, his stitches are all out now. He's like, there's defrosting steak on the side, so he's sniffing around. Um, Hugo, come and look at me. Look. Look, come to the camera. Hugo. Hugo. He's going to be completely, he's after that steak. So, Mum, there is steak up there. Show me your nose. But yeah, he's literally been so much better, haven't you? Sit down then. Good boy. Show me your nose. I don't know if you can see because his nose is black, but... As you can see, it's all nice and healed now. Um, here you go, sit down. I need to focus. Um, but yeah, it's all nice and healed. It's made such a difference to him. Like with all this hot weather as well, um, he's been so much better. And one thing that has happened, um, he has um, allergic to pollen. So obviously with him being able to breathe more in, um, they said that his allergy is an inhaled allergy. There you go, you can see better now. Um, it's an inhaled allergy. So with him having his nostrils widened so he can get more air in, he can actually get in more pollen. He had more of a reaction to some pollen. So yeah, he's all nice and healed now. Here you go. Good boy, look at that nose. Um, but yeah, it's all fine. He's nice and um, on the top as well, his nose was really bumpy. Um, so I've got some little um, nose balm for him, which I'll link in the description for you. But overall, it's made him a, such a happier dog. Um, so yeah, really happy with how he's recovered.